टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू ब्रॉडकास्ट मीडिया टॉपिक इज कैमरा लेंसेस एंड इट्स पार्ट नाउ लेट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द कैमरा basically camera in photography device for recording an image of an object on a light sensitive surface it is essentially a light tight box with an aperture to admit light focused onto a sensor film or a plate what are camera lenses basically a camera is a device that record pictures it consists of a sealed box that catches the light rays given off by a source a lens at the front of the camera bring the light rays to a focus and makes the picture seem closer to further away traditional camera store pictures in a chemical from using photographic film camera lens also known as the photographic lens or photographic object is an optical lens or assembly of lenses used in conjunction with the camera body and mechanism to make images of objects either on photographic film or on other media capable of storing an image chemically or electronically a digital single lens reflex camera is a digital camera that combines the optics and the mechanism of a single lens reflex camera with a digital imaging sensor there is a no major difference in principle between a lens used for a still camera a video camera a telescope a microscope or other apertures but the details of design and construction are different a lens might be permanently fixed to a camera or it might be interchangeable with lenses of different focal length apertures and other properties while in principle a simple convex lens will suffice in practice a compound lens made up of a number of optical lens elements is required to correct the many optical aberrations that arise some abbreviations will be present in any lens system it is the job of the lens designer to balance these and produce a design that is suitable for photographic use and possibly mass production we have a six major types of digital camera lenses that is standard lens macro lens telephoto lens wide angle lens specialist lens and kit lens start with the standard lens standard lens basically a that kind of lens called a normal lens 
is one which produces an image that roughly match what the human eye see and which looks natural to the viewer it sits between the telephoto lens and the wide angle lens which produce unnaturally zoomed in and zoomed out image respectively it has often been cited that 50 mm lenses when used on both film and digital 35 mm slr is a standard focal length anything longer than this is telephoto and anything wider is wide angle the reason for this is that the perspective of a 50 mm lens is similar to that of a human eye basically the standard lens has a fixed focal length that is 50 mm 85 mm and 100 mm and reproduces fairly accurately with the human eye sees the terms of perspective and angle of view for a 35 mm film camera or a full frame dslr the 50 mm lens is considered standard next is the macro lens macro lens basically macro photography is extreme close up photography usually of very small objects and living organisms like insect in which the size of the subject in the photograph is greater than life size by the original a macro photograph is one in which the size of the subject on the negative or image sensor is life size or greater in some senses however it refers to a finished photograph of a subject that is greater than life size apart from technical photography and film based processes where the size of the image on the negative and image sensor is the subject of discussion the finished print or on screen image more commonly lends a photograph its macro status for example when producing a 64 inch print using 35 format film or sensor a life size result is possible with the lens having only one ratio for reproduction ratio next we have a telephoto lens telephoto lens basically in photography and cinematography is a specific type of a long focus lens in which the physical length of the lens is shorter than the focal length a telephoto lens increases focal length it's most commonly used to show far away objects with accurate perspective and with the level of precise detail that was once only possible with close range photography a wide angle lens expands the horizontal scope of a camera shoot
telephoto lenses are incredibly versatile and useful in a variety of situations from zooming in on far away subjects to taking flattering portraits to comprising a scene to add drama a good telephoto lens can help you take your photography to the next level next is the wide angle lens wide angle lens refers to a lens whose focal length is substantially smaller than the focal length of a normal lens for a given film plan wide angle lenses allow photographer to get as close to the subject as possible without excluding crucial elements in the background screen giving viewers the feeling of being as though they are reviewing the scene with their own eyes rather than through a photograph any camera lens with a focal length of less than 35 mm is considered wide angle a lens with a focal length of less than around 24 mm is considered an ultra wide angle lens there are commonly called fish eye lens because of the extreme angle of view wide angle lenses tend to be 35 mm or lower next specialist lens specialist lens is a soft contact lens that help to improve the appearance of an eye damaged by trauma photosis prop contact lens rgp lenses to help improve cosmesis and vision in an eye with significant photosis that is dropping upper eyelid specialist contact are lenses that are designed for patient who have corneal conditions or other eye issue for which conventional contacts are not suitable since regular contact lens sit directly on the surface of the eyes covering the cornea it is imperative that they fit correctly and comfortably progressive lenses correct more than one vision condition with the focal part progressing from top to bottom without a visible line separating them concave lenses used to treat near sightedness or myopia the lens shape is concave to bend rays outwards next is the kit lens a kit lens is a starter which can be sold with an interchangeable lens camera such as a single lens reflex camera prime lenses are generally faster then comparably priced zoom lenses so the change to zoom lenses means that recent kit lens 
are usually also slower. At its longest focal length, your kit lens can be considered a short to medium telephoto, which makes it good for portrait. Telephotos are the best lens for portrait work as they allow you to create a shallow depth of field and isolate your subject from the background. We have also a fisheye lens. A fisheye lens is an ultra wide angle lens that produces strong visual distortion intended to create a wide panoramic and hemispherical image. Fisheye lenses achieve extremely wide angle of view. A fisheye is an extreme wide angle lens that produces a 180 degree field of view with the intent to create panoramic and hemispherical image. Its name was first coined in 1906 by Robert W. Wood, an American physicist and inventor who linked the effect of a fisheye lens to the world view of a fish underwater. Now start with the standard lens. You can also see the picture of the lens in this. A standard lens is one with a mid range focal length, typically around 50 mm. They have an angle of view, which is roughly the same as the angle that the human eye can comfortably view. Standard camera lens usually have a fixed focal length and wide aperture. They are popular for a wide range of photography subjects, including landscape, portraits, and candid shots. Next is the micro lens. A macro lens is one designed specially for close-up photography. They have a different internal construction from normal lenses, which gives them very good sharpness and constraint. Macro lens are useful for photographing any subject at very close range. Typical subjects include insects, animals, and plants. They are also popular for taking extremely detailed photos of everyday object. Next is the telephoto lens. A telephoto lens has a long focal length and provides a high level of magnification. Allowing you to photograph subjects at a moderate 
to far distance they tend to be bigger and heavier than other types of lens telephoto lenses are popular for any type of photography where you can't get near to the subject including wildlife and sports event they are also commonly used in portrait photography where a moderate telephoto lens will provide a natural undistorted perspective next is the wide angle lens a wide angle lens is one with a short focal length they provide an angle of view beyond that of a standard lens allowing them to capture more of the scene in a single shot extreme wide angle lenses are known as fish eye lenses wide angle lenses are useful for photographing landscapes cramping interiors and other subject which want fit into a normal lenses field of view fish eye lenses take this even further and are popular for photographing action sports like skateboarding and surfing where their inherent distortion gives photos a dynamic feel next is the specialist lens finally there are a number of specialist camera lens which cater for less common photography needs these include tilt and shift lenses for perspective control soft focus lenses for portrait photography infrared lenses for capturing light outside the normal spectrum a specialist lens is used to produce some sort of special or creative effect and so they have limited use in general photography however they can be very useful if you need to photograph a particular subject in a particular way next is the kit lens many entry level slrs come bundled with one or two lenses slr that is single lens reflex often called starter or kit lenses these are good for getting you up and running quickly but they are generally very cheap slow lenses with poor image quality a kit lens is great for getting to grips with your camera and figuring out what local lens you like using but you should consider replacing it when your budget allows next we have the types of camera types of camera basically 
we have DSLR camera, mirrorless camera, bridge camera, compact camera, film camera, action camera, 360 camera, smartphones camera, instant cameras, and medium format cameras. So first of all, start with the point and shoot camera. It is inexpensive, simple to use, compact size, automatic setting. A point and shoot camera, also known as compact camera, and sometimes abbreviated to P and S. Is a still camera designed primarily for simple operation. Most use focus free lenses or autofocus for focusing. Automatic systems for setting the exposure options and have flash units built in. A film or digital camera in which the focus and exposure is entirely automatic. The user aims the camera and presses the button. The camera does the rest. Point and shoot cameras can range from cheap through away to pocket size digital. Next is the SLR. SLR basically a single lens reflex, often expensive, requires knowledge to use, total control of settings, interchangeable lens, and use of accessories. A single lens reflex camera is a camera that typically uses a mirror and prism system that permits the photographer to view through the lens and see exactly what will be captured. With twin lens reflex, and range finder cameras, the viewer image could be significantly different from the final image. It is a that kind of camera that typically uses a mirror and prism system Next is the DSLR, a digital single lens reflex camera is a digital camera that combines the optics and the mechanism of a single lens reflex camera with a digital imaging sensor. The reflex design scheme is the primary distance between a DSLR and other digital cameras. DSLR camera are known for their single lens mirror system. This allows you to preview the exact optical view of the image you are about to take. The advantage of DSLR is that they fit into every budget they are great for professional photographer as they allow great control.
Next is the action and speciality camera. This kind of camera, GoPro Polaroid underwater camera. An action camera or action cam is a digital camera designed for recording action while being imaged in it. Action camera are therefore typically compact and rugged and waterproof at several surface level. They typically use CMOS image sensor and can take photos in burst mode and time lapse mode as well as record high definition video. Slow motion video recording at 120 or 240 FPS is also a common feature. Next is the speciality camera. Speciality camera basically a that kind of camera who just use for the special purpose. This is a single lens reflex. Single lens reflex camera. Basically, the light enters through the lens reflex of a mirror and can be displayed in the viewfinder. With the photos is taken, the mirror swings up and the shutter opens exposing the center. The sensor then records the image before the shutter and mirror close again. You can see the camera here, the diagram and their part and the function. This area is a viewfinder where we can see all kind of view. This is a sensor. This is the shutter. This is the mirror down position. That is aperture. This is lenses. This is light path. This yellow. And this is the press button. You can see the parts of the camera. We have a lens, body, mirror, shutter, sensor, viewfinder, shutter release, hot show, and mode dial. First is the lens. So this is a lens. We can also the change. These cameras basically is the interchangeable cameras. Pressing the, this button and we can release the lens. Next is the body. This all is the body of the camera. Third part is the mirror. This is the mirror. Four is the shutter. This is the shutter. Five is the sensor. Six is the viewfinder. Seven is the shutter release button. 
this. That is the option on and off. This is the hot show. We can indulge the flash lights and other kind of lights handling here. And these is the more dial. A is the aperture. Green sign is the auto. M is the manual. A is the aperture. P is the pictoid. And these are all kind of different kinds of functioning here. So we have some terms and settings. In the camera, first of all, we have a megapixels. So we have a one lakh pixels in a one camera after clicking a picture. We have a red eye. The distortion to the eyes of a person when flash is used. White balance. The color balance based on your environment light to make white a true white. Next is the exposure. The total amount of light received determined by the following. ISO, it's a sensitivity of light, aperture measured in f-stop, affects the sharpness of your photo, Shutter speed, control exposure also controls the motion. Next, what is ISO? You can see the difference after checking out the photos in between the lightning. Basically, ISO just for the lightning purpose. Sensitivity to light of the camera sensor. The ISO setting is one of three elements used to control exposure. The other two are f-stop and shutter speed. With film cameras using a higher ISO film, such as ISO 400 to 1000, often resulting in noticeable gray. I'm asking you a question that how does ISO affect a photo? You can see the difference here. ISO increases or decreases the brightness of a photograph, but also affects both grain, noise levels, and dynamic range. At the lowest ISO setting, your images will have the least amount of noise and the highest dynamic range, giving you the most flexibility in post-processing. Basically, the normal range of camera ISO is about 200 to 1600. With today's digital cameras, you can sometimes go as low as 50 or as high as over 3 million, depending upon the camera model. It also affects the quality of the image the higher the ISO, the more grain. Ideally, you have enough natural light to allow you to photograph at a low ISO settings. Remember, 
that ISO works in tandem with shutter speed and aperture to create a good image. The images show pictures taken at 100, 400, 1600, and 3200 with no aperture or shutter speed manipulated. Next is the aperture. Aperture is a hole or an opening through which light travels. More specifically, the aperture and focal length of an optical system determine the cone angle of a bundle of rays that come to a focus in the image plane. An optical system typically has many opening or structures that limit the ray bundles. These structure may be the edge of the lens or mirror or a ring or other picture that holds an optical element in place. Or maybe a special element such as a diaphragm placed in the optical path to limit the light admitted by the system. Aperture refers to opening a lens diaphragm through which lens passes. Lower f-stop give more exposure because they represent the large aperture while the higher f-stop give less exposure because they represent the smaller aperture. You can see the diagram. If we will select the f-stop 16, the hole will be too small and our photo will look like that. So much dark. If we will setting our camera in the f-stop 2.8, similarly our photo will like that. It's light. And if we will setting in the F1.4, our photo is too much bright. So these kind of colors transactions we have. Similarly, if we have selected small digit, our camera aperture opens so much high. And oppositely, if we will select the high, our aperture will too small. It is mired in f-stops, changes the depth of field in a photo. Depth of field, the depth in a scene from foreground to background that will be sharp into a photo. Smaller apertures increases the depth of field and larger ones decrease. We have a shutter speed. Shutter speed basically exposure times in the length of time that the film or digital sensor inside the camera is exposed to light when taking a photograph, the amount of light that reaches the film or image sensor is proportional to the exposure time. One by 500 of a second will let half as much light in as 1 by 250. 
shutter speed is a measurement of the time the shutter is open show in seconds or fractions of a second that is 1 second 1 by 2 setting 1 by 4 setting 1 by 250 second 1 by 500 setting etc in other words the faster the shutter speed the it is a photograph the subject without blur or freeze motion and the smaller the effect of a camera shake you might need to pick a shutter speed of around 1 by 160th which is fast enough so that you won't get any motion blur but slow enough to allow a good amount of light in for exposure shooting the night sky requires a slow shutter speed that is fast enough to avoid star spreads it controls the exposure lets light in measured in time fractions of a second the shorter the length of time the shutter is open the more crisp the image will be but less light will enter controls how motion is photographed the longer the shutter is open the more light is recorded motion will be blurred but likewise darkness will be more visible you can see the difference here this is the picture after shutter and when we are using the shutter mode picture like with that we have some kinds of the shutting mode basically this green is auto all settings are automatically selected by camera p stand for the program mode av stand for aperture priority mode tv stand for shutter priority mode m stand for the manual mode this picture of girl is that the portrait this is for the landscape this is for the macro and this is for the sports this is for video on and off so the auto all settings are automatically selected by camera p stand for the program mode preset settings as a go to quick selection av stands for aperture priority mode you select aperture the rest is auto tv stands for shutter priority mode you select shutter speed the rest is auto m stands for the manual mode you select all kind of settings rather iso rather shutter rather aperture and so on next is the portrait camera automatically uses large aperture to take a good portrait next is the landscape camera uses large depth of field to get everything in focus macro allows focus on small objects get high details and last is the sports camera uses a fact fast shutter speed to capture smart moving object clearly next we have some kind of memory cards sd card stands for secure digital card most commonly used memory device higher capacity cards can hold 
upwards of 2 TB. Next is the compact flash. Introduced in 1994 and is still used for higher end cameras due to its fast data writing, maximum capacity of 2 TB. Next is the Memory Stick Pro, that is the Geo card used for Sony devices while still used by some devices. SD cards are the standard. It's also maximum capacity of the 2 TB. Next, we have a XD card used for old Fujifilm and Olympus cameras. They also maximum capacity of the 2 TB, GB. Next, we have some kind of the accessories of the camera. Hot show, tripod mount. Hot show, the mounting point on top of the camera for accessories like a flash and microphone. Tripod mount, the mounting point on the button bottom of the camera for tripod, monopods, and glide cameras, etc. We have a lenses, zoom lens, prime lens, wide angle lens, telephoto lens, and macro lenses. So this is the conclusion. There are many things that determine the quality of your photography and one of the most important is the lenses you use. A good camera lens will capture sharp photos with plenty of detail and contrast, while a poor one can leave your images looking dull and blurry. When shopping for lens, it's important to consider the types of subject you intend to shoot the likely lightning conditions, and of course, your budget. There is no single lens that is perfect for every situation, so you will need to balance the pros and cons of the various options and pick the best compromise. So thank you so much. I hope you clear about the all concept of the camera their types, their lenses, their accessories, their memory cards, and their functioning also. So thank you so much.